Today we're going to use a surface bonding cement to make a planter that's also a table or a bench. This is an easy but slightly messy DIY project that begins with some 3 quarter inch thick plywood. I cut a couple 12 inch wide strips of plywood that will define the height of the table. I then sketched out a design on another piece of plywood that kind of looks like an avocado and then cut it out with my jigsaw. I just drew this by hand but I had a rough idea of what I wanted it to look like. I want the base to be slightly smaller than the top, but not so small that it tips over. So I just drew some curves on plywood and then cut them out with the jigsaw. Gary, my pet chipmunk, came by for a visit and luckily I had a peanut in my pocket. I just want to add enough of these plywood supports to provide a stable base and so that I have material that I can screw the steel mesh to. I cut some small strips of plywood and then glued them to the top side of the vertical supports. This is just going to give me a little more material to screw through. I clear coated all of these plywood pieces just so that the concrete plaster won't absorb into the wood. I just used a water-based polyurethane by Verithane to do this. Once the clear coat had fully cured, I was able to screw on the vertical supports. I then flipped the table over and added additional screws from the top down. I then trace the outline of the supports to design the piece that's going to support the bottom. Once again, I just cut it out with my jigsaw. I clear coated this piece as well and then screwed it to the vertical supports. Now the structure is quite strong and ready for steel mesh. I've been experimenting with my new Ryobi HP rotary cutoff tool. It's really lightweight, it's easy to use, and it's just a little bit less cumbersome and aggressive than an angle grinder. I cut the steel mesh, or wire lath as it's sometimes called, into strips, and then use pan head screws to screw it to the plywood. These strips bend easily in one direction, but it's hard to get them to fold and contour to the plywood. So I made some additional cuts in the mesh and that gave me a little bit more flexibility. If you don't have a rotary cutoff tool, you can just use an angle grinder to cut the mesh instead. The mesh was going on the plywood nicely, but there were some places where I had to use a hammer to kind of really bang it and force it into the right shape that I wanted. I had just guessed on all the measurements, so there was a few holes, but I just cut some small pieces and patched them up. And I used my angle grinder to trim the pieces that extended past the bottom of the plywood base. There were locations where the layers overlapped, and I wanted to get those as tight to each other as possible. So I used zip ties from the inside to kind of cinch the mesh up and pull it together. I used the same process on the inside of the planter and I just rolled up some mesh, stuck it in there, and then screwed it to the plywood. For the top, I screwed on a large piece and then used the angle grinder to trim it around the edges. The cut edges of the mesh are quite sharp, so I used a hammer to round them over the plywood. This will just make it a little less likely that I'll cut my fingers when I'm applying the plaster. For the plaster itself, I'm going to use Quick Wall Surface Bonding Cement. This is a really strong cement product. It has fiberglass reinforcement in it, and it's not just a finish coating, it's actually structural. I've used it before for CMU or cinder block projects, and it's really easy to work with. We mixed up about a bag and a quarter and then applied it with gloved hands. Now because the design has an overhang, it was a little bit difficult to get it to stick to the overhanging parts of the design, but it was really easy to apply on the top. So we just focused on the top and the first few inches down from the top and then let that cure overnight so that we could flip the whole thing and then work on the lower section. It's so much easier when you have gravity working with you. So for this first layer, we're just going about 3 eighths to half an inch thick with the plaster. And we're not worrying about smoothing it out because we know we're going to add additional layers later. We're really just trying to cover up all the mesh and provide a nice solid structural base that will make the whole structure nice and rigid. We let the table cure for 24 hours and then mixed up another batch of quick wall. Before we applied the second layer, we first misted it with some water just to get it a little bit moist so that this next layer of plaster would stick to it nicely. 
This is going to be our finished layer, so I really focused on smoothing out the contours, but I only did this layer just about a quarter to three eighths of an inch thick. We used two and a quarter 50 pound bags of quick wall, but not all of it made it onto the table. Some of it kind of fell on the ground. So the overall table ended up weighing just about 90 pounds. This is actually kind of fun. It reminds me of working with modeling clay or pottery or something like that. And it's surprisingly easy to get surfaces that are smooth and flat. Now most of the fiberglass pieces get flattened into the surface, but a few of them were sticking out. So I just used my blowtorch to burn them off. I flipped the table over and then used an old beat up chisel to clean up the edges just so that it would sit flat on the floor. I wanted to put a fiddle leaf fig in the middle, so I bought one and then trimmed the edges down just a little bit. I put a drainage tray and some gravel in the bottom of the planter and then dropped the whole potted plant right inside. This is a prototype for a series of outdoor planters that I'm thinking about for a hotel that I'm designing. I really like that it's inexpensive to build, has a durable outdoor finish, and it can combine both furniture and plants. What's not to like about that? Now I like this kind of rough textured white plaster, but you could add a smoother coat of like a mission grade plaster over the top of it if you want it to be really slick. Or you could just paint it with normal latex exterior house paint. I really like this project, but there's been one thing that's been bugging me. At first I thought it looked more like an avocado, and then one of my friends said that nope, it looks more like a toilet. So you tell me what you think, avocado or toilet. Either way, it's a really fun project. You can be really freeform and expressive with the jigsaw, just cutting out scraps of plywood, and just kind of roughly screw them together, and then smooth everything over with the mesh and plaster. So if you're getting a little sick of rectilinear designs or standard two by four plywood furniture, this is a system that allows you to do all sorts of cool organic shapes. So be sure to check out QuickWall or some of the other concrete products that I use by going to quickcrete.com. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Have a good one.